I fell in love with Torah with Rabbi Salvech. He gave the shirim. When you heard the shir from him, one shir, that was it. You would be hooked on him. Welcome back to another special episode of Inspiration for the Nation. We, are, we have a jam-packed program for you, so buckle up, because this episode is all about falling in love with Torah. Torah is, is the blueprint of the world. We know that God looked at the Torah, then created the world, and we have this idea, you, know, you don't just learn Torah, you gotta live Torah, you gotta fall in love with Torah. So Rev uh, Eliada uh, Goldvich hooked me up with the, the Gedolim of the world, and um, we, we talk about a program that is, is changing the world. So I got to speak to the Rashiva of YU, Rav Herschel Shachter Shlita, as well as the chief Sephardic rabbi, uh, Maharan Shlomo Amar. He's, he's, also the, he's now the chief rabbi of Yerushalayim. These two giant Gedolim about falling in love with Torah and their, their personal connection to Torah. So that is in the first half of this episode. And the next half of the episode, we talk about how you could fall in love with Torah guaranteed if you it's a program that's rev, revolutionizing how people study and learn torah and if you you probably know about them but if you don't stick around to hear the magic that's going on this episode is a memory of shimon david ben yaakov Shlema, as well as miriam sarabas yaakov moshe and i want to thank our sponsors who you'll hear more about you're going to hear more about 24 6 one of the coolest websites and apps that any jewish person needs to know about, and also our friends at Joma. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode. And now, my conversation with the G'dayalim Hadar. I'm Yaakov Langer, and you're listening to Inspiration for the Nation. Okay, thank you very much to the Rav and the Sian for uh, doing this. At, I know your time is very precious, but uh, first off, w- at what point did... did um, the each each of you uh, meet each other. The two of us. Yeah. Many years ago, when Rabbi Amar was appointed chief rabbi, so the chief rabbi always has to come visit America. So among the various places he had to visit in Yeshiva University, all the chief rabbis come. So we met him there. So we met him then before we, either of us, but before Rabbi El Yada started the whole program, we met each other when. Rabbi was the chief rabbi. And we're going to get into the program, but I first want to ask, does, does the Shiva remember the first time he fell in love with Taira? First time I fell in love with Taira? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> what, what could, could I was before Bar Mitzvah, and Rav Salvechik used to give a shir every year on his father's yard site, Gimel Shvat. It was a big shir. Hundreds of people came from out of town. They would fly in, drive in from all over to come to the shir once a year. She was four hours two hours halacha and two hours drush, hashkafe, on the same topic that the halacha was. The hashkafe was based on the halacha, and I was before Bar Mitzvah, and the rabbinical alumni of Yeshiva University used to mail out Mar Mekaymas to all of them as smachim of the yeshiva. So my father prepared me with all the gemaras. I came to the Shia. Whew. So I was blown away. I used to think as a young boy that my father is the biggest tamachachim in the world. And then I heard Rabbi Salvechik share. I was so disappointed. I realized <laughs> my father is not the biggest Tamachacham in the world. My father was so thrilled that I fell in love with this uh, great uh, Rabbi Salvechik. And then in the yeshiva, I was doing well. I was uh, then that was before bar mitzvah. Then after, right after my bar mitzvah, I went to high school in yeshiva university. And then the Rebbe that I had the third year recommended that in the fourth year of high school they should put me in Rabbi Salvechik shear. So my father was so thrilled about that. He didn't push. But uh, the Rebbe told him in Ireland Yeshiva, so I was very fortunate. I, I learned Barab Salvechik starting from the age of 16 when I was in the last year of high school. So that's when I fell in love with Torah was in Rabbi Salvechik. gave the shirim. When you heard the shir from him, one shir, that was it. You would be hooked on him. What advice uh, would the Rashiva have for someone who's, who's trying to get more into learning, trying to fall in love with learning, but they're struggling with that and they... You always have to struggle in the beginning because you don't understand. But after you pick up a little bit and everything falls into place, the more you learn, so the more everything falls into place. And then when you understand it, then then you like it, then you enjoy it. If you don't understand it, uh, you don't enjoy it. But uh, all wonderful things are like that. I want to ask the Maran, could you ask the Maran now when he first fell in love? Uh, Torah? 
אז הרב הסביר, ראש הישיבה הסביר, שהוא שאל, הוא, שמע, הוא שמע את השיעור של הרב סולוביצ'יק, שאבא שלו הכין אותו, הוא הכין, הוא נתן לו את הגמרות, להכין לשיעור שהרב סולוביצ'יק היה נותן, ואז הוא הגיע לשיעור והוא אמר שהוא לא שמע כזה דבר בחיים שלו, ומאותו רגע הוא ידע שהוא... זה היה קודם הבא מצווה שלי. אז היה איזה תקופה שגם הרב... אני חושב שנדבר על ה... שלא נאריך אם נתחיל עם מימי בראשית, לא נגיע לנועה. ברוך השם, הרב גולדוויכט עושה אהבת תורה בפועל. יש בגמרא, רבי חנינה אומר, אם תשתכח תורה, אני אחזיר אותה בפלפולי. רבי חייא אומר, אני עביד נא דלא תשתכח תורה. הוא מסביר איך יעשה. בדורנו, זה לא מתאים ללכת לזרוע, לגדל צבעים, יש ספרים, יש הכל, אבל איך עושים? אז הרב גולדוויכט מצא את השיטה של רבי חייא, עושה להם מבחנים, על נותן להם תעודה של שמיכת חבר, אז הם אוהבים ללמוד, והם לומדים. וזה התחיל בארץ, עכשיו באמריקה, וזה הולך ורץ. כמו אש בשדה קוצים שהם מבישים. אני שומע, כל רב אומר, אני גם רוצה לעשות. היינו בברוקלין עכשיו, באזכרה של הרב עובדיה יוסף, ביום שישי בבוקר. בא הרב אליי מנצור, אחד הרבנים הכי חשובים שם. אמר, אני גם רוצה להכניס לבית כנסת שלי את צמיחת חבר. בא עוד אחד, זה הולך. ופרצת ימה וקדמה צפונה ונגמר. כשרואים את הרב גולדוויכט, אברך צעיר, לא מאמינים שהוא יכול לעשות. באמת הוא לא יכול, אבל השם עוזר לו. השם עוזר לו והוא מצליח. ברוך השם. ברוך השם. אוקיי. כן. You know the past week when we were traveling all over the place so it really uh, he saw how it causes gives a real obvious terror when people are learning and getting tested and reviewing and uh, we were in Brooklyn and wherever we're going a lot of rabbim are coming over to the to the show and saying they also want to open a Chabura they also want to start is it a surprise that the, as the world progresses and gets more I guess gashmiistic in a certain way that there's a a bigger force and a bigger love of Tyra learning going on now? It's not that we're coming closer to the Gula, so there's more learning. But the Rishon Etzion quoted from the Sefer Das Tavunas, from the Rambchal, the end of the Sefer, that as you come close to the Gula and, and the Tyra is getting stronger, so Zel Yom Hazer, the Tumah, has to get stronger also. But everything will collapse in the end. The whole Tumah will collapse. He gave a marshal, if you blow a balloon, so it gets big. Keep on blowing, it gets big. It gets b- blow bigger, the whole thing collapses. But at least you have the piece of balloon here. But over here, kol ha-rish ha-kula v'yosh an-tichla. The whole rish is going to disappear. They want to be the piece of the balloon here. So he was giving a whole marshal explaining why. But that's as you get closer to the ghoul, it's going to be zel yu ma zel. The learning is going to get stronger, and the k'ech ha-tuma is going to get stronger. And then the k'ech ha-tuma will disappear. What's some of the reactions or, or just feedback that, that both of you have, uh, both of the G'dayim have seen from the people that have been part of uh, this program? Or from their family, maybe from them themselves? The wives have more respect for their husbands because they, they eat them la Torah. The children have more respect for their father. They see that certain days the father has to chaza for the b'china. He has to call on the phone, his charusa, to prepare the, for the shir and to review the shir. And the whole family is elevated to a higher level of, of uh, religious observance. They all see that the, that the father is a, becoming a, more of a ben Torah. And the father himself, the people feel that the, the Sefer tells a story on the Pasuk Torah Tzivulana Moshe, Marosh Gilos Yankov, that a farmer came to the base medrash of Rabchia, And he complained, and he started screaming to the Terapchia, you're a Ganev, you stole my Yerusha. 
So he said, I, I, I'm not related to you. What do you mean I stole your Yerusha? says, Torah Tzih Lanam Arosh, the Torah belongs to all the Kali, so it doesn't only belong to the Rabbonim, to the Kaloniks, it belongs to the Balabatim who work for a living, also belongs to the farmers. So now we're giving back the Torah to the people who work for a living. It's not fair that all the years we were cheating them, they're entitled to learn also. It's not fair. <clears throat> Let's say if you walk in, I once happened to be uh, in Lakewood, on the yard site of our Baron Kotlin. So they have a big suda, and then they make a seam on shas. Then they have someone say a shir, a dvater. So I learned Yavamas more than once. So someone got up, started saying a shir on Yavamas. I got lost after three minutes. I didn't understand one word that he was talking about. He was talking on such a high level. You have to explain everything. I, I know a little bit about Yavamas. <laughs> You're supposed to explain me. You don't start uh, on the highest level. We've been cheating the Balabatim all the years. You have to teach Torah in such a way that you make it accessible to the public. I was so you go with this to speak about this in public. He said, in all the newspapers and all the magazines, was in, when there's a new discovery, a new, a new Chiddush in physics and chemistry, that they publicize it and they write it in such a way that one who never went to graduate school in chemistry or physics, the Sabbath says, they give you an inkling of what the discovery is, or, or what, what they just, something new. It's not like this, it's like that. They give you, so he said, the Rabbanim have an obligation to make the Gemara understandable to the Hamaynam, not to dumb it down, not to, not to oversimplify it. They give enough background that the Balabatim should understand. You should lay, raise them to a higher level, not that you should go down to their level. You have to succeed in raising them to the level. They should understand what's going on in the Gemara. And and uh, for the Maran, if, if, did he, does, is he getting nachas? What's the feedback that he's that he's so he's very he, much he spoke, so. Yeah, what he, he spoke about it. Oh, he spoke before. And then yeah, yeah. and then when the father has the uh, certificate that he passed, and he puts it on the piano, and his wife and the children see it, and the friends come and visit, they see it, they see that this man is serious. He passed the exams. The exams are not murderously hard, but they're not so easy. <laughs> So uh, well, Yada uh, makes it in such a way that it should be uh, not so easy. They have to, they know they have to work hard to do well on the bchina. Rav Gam is built a toilet shel bchina, ve'ech she'abalabatim chuzrim ve'achashivut shel ze, ve'gam she'mekamim tatuda she'rabanim chatumim alav, ve'ze anishim ochim nichnasim ve'roim etze ve'mazberim la'chaverim shelaim ech she'ze bemet nokach amelut ve'she'ze lo kan, aval ze gam efshari. Rav Diber she'efshar. הבלבטים, נו, בהיסטוריה, הרבה פעמים הם לא למדו עכשיו, כי לפעמים זה היה מדי קשה, עכשיו אנחנו נותנים להם את ההזדמנות באמת אה, ללמוד ולקנות את מה שלמדו. And you give them the whole development of Torah about Peh from the beginning to the end. They teach them a piece of Gemara, then they read you the Rambam, then they read the Shulchan Arach, then the Shach, then the Pizchei Tshuva, then Rab Shleim Zalman, then this one. They go from the beginning to the end to develop a whole thing. They should understand the whole ins and outs of the Allah. And you, you don't cover kola tarakula. You cover one section at a time, spend a couple of months on one section, right? then you spend a couple of months on another section. If you go a little at a time, then you'll succeed in covering everything. I, I want to finish off with one question. Thank, first off, thank, thank you again for your time. Um, it's a little of a personal question, but I think it could give a lot of people chizik just to understand from a personal level where where what what you have to say is, is there a specific sugya in the Taira um, that you love? Le- obviously, you love learning everything, but the, particularly that you it ha- holds a special place in your heart. Shuel, is a sugya imiesh because a sugya she arav achi oev bekol atora. Boru she yudim ovim et kol atora kula. אבל אם יש איזה נקודה, איזה סוגיה, איזה עניין שמאוד חביב על הרב. הגמרא אומר, רואה איזה אין נסיעה בין הוין, מי שאומר, הסוגיה זו אינו, הסוגיה זו אינו, אסור, אסור להגיד כן. The Rashiva just said that you're not allowed to answer that. Oh, really? Not allowed to say this is a gishmak gemara and this is boring. No, everything's great. Everything's amazing, for sure. But is there something a little... מה שהרב אמר על הבחינה, אני בזמנו, לפני שהייתי דיין, עזרתי לרב שרם בתל אביב להקים ישיבה גדולה. אני הייתי אחראי על ה... הייתי מלמד אותם ומשגיח. לפני שהקמתי הלכתי לרב שך, מגדולי ראשי הישיבות, אולי 
שאלתי אותו שייתן לי עצה מה לעשות שיצליחו. הוא אמר לי, תעשה להם בחינות, מבחנים. ב... אף פעם לא עושים מבחנים בישיבה גדולה. בישיבה גדולה. אמרתי לו, הרב, זה מדובר על ישיבה גדולה. הוא אמר לי, כן, כן, הבנתי. אז הוא אמר לי, הלוואי בפונביץ', אם היו שומעים לי, היו עושים מבחנים, היו הרבה יותר טובים. ככה הוא אמר. ראשון לציון סדר. המבחנים. מחזקים את התאומים. ראשון לציון סדר, there was a certain ישיבה that was being built, so he went to Rav Shach in Panovich to get some advice. So Rav Shach told the Rishon Lezion, he said, make sure that they test the Bachram. Written Bechines. Written Bechines in the Yeshiva. And the Rishon Lezion said, no, no, it's, it's Yeshiva Gedola, like there's no test in Yeshiva. He says, no, no, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You have to make sure uh, to, test, to test the Bachram. And Rav Shach said, he says, if, you know, there were tests in, in Panovich, the Panovich would be, you know, 10 times greater than, than what it is now. And it's a great Yeshiva. So they don't so they, listen to him. So, but they didn't listen to him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, said, yeah. he said, Alavai, if they would listen to me, so then... Uh, Be great. Remember, Shmuel Razovsky told me the same thing. He said, when the boys are single, Kisha, Bachur, Adain Panui, so you keep them in the yeshiva. Bachrim, they don't, they don't understand. When they get married, the first, the first year, Shana, Rishana, Chachatuna, you should keep them. But then at the end of the first year, you should see if there's advancing. If not advancing, you tell them, go get a job somewhere. You don't belong in the yeshiva. He said, they don't listen to him. Nan Hala doesn't listen. They keep everybody in the yeshiva forever. Says it's a mistake. You have to give Bechinas Balpeh. He was talking about Bechinas Balpeh. Give Bechinas Balpeh. After you see the guy's not a dancing, so tell him you don't belong in a girl. Rav Zalman Nechaim Goldberg also, Lahavdol Ben Chaim Nechaim, he also was very for uh, pushing the Bechinas. He said, at one of the Siyumim, he said, you know, Bedarkoi Be'anivis, he says, I'm not, you know, such a big Talmud Chacham, and I'm not such a big Tzadik, he says, but I'm old. He says, I can tell you one thing. He says, I've seen a lot of people who are learning. He says, you can't compare someone who's learning with a goal to get tested to someone who's just not learning. So it's two different, uh, two different ways of learning. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, part one is finished. Don't, don't end it yet. There's, there's so much gold that I have with my conversation with, with, with Rev El Yada. Um, I, I think it's the most... looking like a buffoon that I've ever done on any of my shows. You'll see why. I, I try to guess the genders of his siblings based on their names. <laughs> I won't spoil it for you. Um, but, but before that, I, I want to tell you about 24-6. 24-6 is an app or website that if you're listening to this when it airs, you probably don't know what it is. And if you're listening to this even like a week or two after this airs, you will know what it is because it is something that is going to revolutionize the Jewish world. It's, there's a lot of problems. There's a lot of problems with the internet. But at the same time, as a from Jew, Orthodox Jew, or whatever type of Jew you are, you want to use the internet. But it's so easy to get, to run into things that you don't want to see, things that you don't want to hear. You know, we have this, this giant problem that there's a lot of women that want to sing. But, you know, men who, they can't listen to them sing, so it's called Isha, but they want to put on online, but then anyone could access it. Here is a solution for that and many other problems. And we have with, with kids, uh, your two-year-old, I have a, I have a two-year-old, he, he goes on YouTube, who knows what he's going to see on there? Or a four-year-old, a six-year-old, a 13-year-old, whatever the age is, or even for you, there is this beautiful website and app called 24-6, Uh, it's spelled out, I just want to make sure I'm saying it right. Yeah, 24, the numbers, 24 and 6, S-I-X. Uh, you could check it out, www.246.app. And this app, it's revolutionizing the world. It is basically a place where you could go and engage with Jewish content. And it's Beautiful by how the filters work. So let's say you say, hey, I want my kid to have access to Jewish music. You'll get some exclusive singers on this app, whether it's Yaakov Shweki, Yishai Rebo, or a lot more. And they're just putting exclusive stuff on this app or just any classic music that you want to hear. You go to this app and you could go and you say, 
for whatever reason, let's say Yaakov Langer decides to become a singer, and I go on the app, and you're like, I really don't think my 10-year-old should be hearing Yaakov Langer. It's not appropriate for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe I'm a terrible singer. You could go and filter your kid's app and say, hey, I don't want them listening to Yaakov Langer. Or my son, I don't want him listening to any women singers. Boom. He won't have access to that. Maybe uh, and there's a bunch of Living the Chaim podcasts, which will be on 24-6. Maybe there's a That's an Issue episode, which isn't mature. It's for mature audiences. It's, 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 it's very important conversations, but it's not for uh, children that are under 15. Or you personally, you don't want to see or hear about certain topics. You could filter it out. And Yeshivas are on board. Gedolim are on board. This app is going to revolutionize the the Jewish world. But here, I'm going to go through some of my notes. Literally, I was overwhelmed with what to talk about. I've known about this app coming out for the past few months because we will be featured on there, and we're very excited about that. But there's just so much that they're solving. Whether you have a flip phone, you could access it. Whether you're um, scared about you know YouTube and the ads that come up. I get it. L- listen, we're on YouTube and, and I get it. Some people don't want certain ads popping up and I, I you know this right now is an ad, but uh, the ads that come up from YouTube, we can't control that. It's based on the algorithm and sometimes the algorithm shows you things that you don't want to see. This app takes care of that. So it, it's I, did I mention it's free? It is free. They have a paid paid version where you get more exclusive perks and even that it's less than ten dollars a month. but it's so worth it to go ahead and check it out. We'll have a link in the show notes. Um, I don't know if the link will even work right away. So if you're listening to this episode right when it airs, wait like a week or two and go back to it. It's 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 amazing. It's amazing. There's so much more to say about it. I will talk about them way more. But now we're going to transition to the next part of this episode, and you will hear about a program about Someone who's, by the way, he's very humble. He's so young and and is totally revolutionizing how people approach Torah. If you aren't learning and you're like, you have that Jewish guilt, and you're like, I should be learning more, this is for you. If you are learning, you want to connect to it more, this is for you. If you want to connect your whole family to Torah on a deeper level, this is for you. Now, here is the rest of my conversation about Smichas Chavar. Okay, so let's let's we're gonna get into your like your trip now because it's like one of the wildest trips with the most incredible people. But I want to start a little before with your name. You're the only first of all, can you pronounce your name because I don't want to say it wrong. It's Eliada Goldwicht. Okay, Eliada. am I sounding super like in a box? The fact that like your first name Eliada, like I don't, I'm not familiar with that name at all. Right. So most people have never heard the name before. Um, the names of my family in general are very wild card. My niece actually, she's very funny. She, whenever she meets like new people and they say, oh, what are the names of your aunts and uncles? So she'll, let's play a game, boy or girl. And then she'll name all oh, the names. That is very funny. And, and Can we do that? Sure. Okay. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Aviad, Orital, Etl, Alimor, Aliada. Okay, so, let's do Aviad. one. Aviad, boy or girl. I think girl. No, Aviad's a boy. Oh my but gosh. That's, okay. that's, but that's a famous one. Okay. Meaning in Israel, in Israel, in that's Israel well fine, known, but okay. I'm like classic. Okay. Orital. Orital? Mm-hmm. Boy or girl? I would think boy. No, that's a girl. Wow. Oh even... my gosh. Okay, <laughs> let's you're, go. You're on. over two. Um, ETL. Okay, I know. I've spoken to him before. Oh, so that ETL. I know. So you know I've been to Yeah. Okay. okay. But that's, I think I would have thought boy. Okay. Um, and then Ellie Moore. I, I think boy. That's a girl. That's a girl? Yeah. I'm okay. Wow. And then Eliada. Wow. Yeah. So I had a friend actually. He's he said, Wow, I love the name Eliada. Right. So Eliada is from Tanakh. Hashem knows. Eliada. It's one of the me and my two brothers were in Tanakh, who are the children of David Amach. David Amach had a lot of children, but Okay, no Avshalom's in your family. <laughs> okay. Exactly. So uh so I had a friend, he's like, Oh, I love that name. So you know, when I get married, I'm gonna name my kid Eliada. So I said, But what if it's a girl? Right, so he's like, ah, it's a unisex. Don't worry about <laughs> okay. it. Like, that's so. And wh- why? Do you know why your parents chose such interesting names? Oh, that was an interesting, unique names. We'll have to interview them. Okay. Yeah. Fear, so we have we have our first names are very unique, um, and then the second ones are all normal. So I'm Eliada Yitzchak. Got it. Yeah. So okay. In case we ever need to pull the, I have a normal name. We pull that one. Okay. Got it. But okay. you should know, Rav Nevinsal in the old city, he has a son whose name is Eliada also. So oh, I'm okay. not. So I'm you're not, not the alone. First. Exactly. Interesting. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Um. So I, I want to talk about. Obviously, Smichas cover. 
Um, well, first off, for someone who doesn't know what smichas chaver is, how would you describe it? Smichas chaver is, in my opinion, a revolution in Torah learning for Balabatim, specifically in halacha. Interesting. Okay, and if, what? And then we can get into more. Yeah, details. no. So, so what? What void was there that you said, like, "Hey, we need to change something up"? Like, what did you see? So, my inspiration, like where it came from, was really from the Daf Yomi, right? So, the Daf Yomi is for sure the most successful, I think, Torah initiative for Balabatim, probably in the history of Am Yisrael. Yeah. Right. So, but and Daf Yomi has a lot of advantages. And it also has, in my opinion, you know, some things that could be improved. So what are the You're advantages? Getting, the, the DAF people are coming out to cancel they're right. not. No, no, they're not no, getting no, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want to hear Meaning, So well, you'll see here in a second. Meaning, they'll all agree. I'm on your they'll team, by agree. the way. They'll all I'm agree, on your okay? Team. So DAF Yomi, the, the, the advantages of DAF Yomi is that there's a beginning and an end. You start brachos, you know, and, you know in a few months you're going to finish. You know in seven years you're going to finish shas. It's a very right. clear, set, correct, rigorous system. Correct. And their points of entry, right? Let's say I learned, you know, Bam Metziah and Yeshiva, and now they're starting Bam Metziah. Wow, amazing. I'll jump in, it'll be a good chazar. And then I got hooked, you know, and then, and then I'll just get on. Um, and there's a feeling of accomplishment. Wow, I just finished Bar I just finished Bar I just finished Shas. Oh my goodness, right? So those are the advantages of Daf Yomi. The disadvantages of Daf Yomi uh, are two. Number one, retention is almost impossible. And this, anyone who's honest with you and you know learns Daf, he'll tell you I, it's hard to remember. And number two, it's very hard to bring it home, right? Not every Masechta is something that you can bring to the Shabbos table. So I said, let's take the most successful Torah initiative in the history of Am Yisrael and try to make it applicable without the disadvantages for regular balabatim, specifically with halacha. So smicha schaver, we basically, every six months, is a new topic in halacha, where the rabbim of local shuls, they go and they teach it. So every six months, there's a point of entry, right? You can join every six months. And then there's a feeling of accomplishment, because at the end of every six months, we have a siyam on everything that we learned. And it's very, very practical, very lemaisa. And the goal is that people remember what they learned. Because at the end of every zman, at the end of every six months, there's a test on everything that you learned, right? So we have, there's a beginning and an end. There's points of entry. There's a feeling of accomplishment because, wow, I just did, you know, Basar V'chalav in six months. I just learned Hilchus Tefillah in six months. Uh, and you don't have the downsides of it, you know, not remembering it because there's a test which pushes you pushes you to remember it. And also, a big part of Smicha Schaver is that it makes it home to the Shabbos table. So after every shear, what the Magid shear does, what the Rav does, is he'll email the participants question and answers for the Shabbos table, comics. So whatever you learn at home, meaning, excuse me, whatever you learn in the base menders, all of that gets poured back into the home. So that was the, that was the idea of where, where it came from. And I think to highlight what I think, I mean, there's a bunch of things there, but like par- particularly like how practical it is, you're learning the halachas and and how to really like apply it to your life. Correct. So, so I'll expand on that. Yeah, okay, okay, sure. Yeah. So we learn in yeshivas, whatever yeshiva it is that you learn. A lot of times halacha isn't as learned or retained. I had a guy. It's who, there, but it's like 15 minutes at the beginning correct, of the day. Exactly. Now let's learn Gemara exactly. for the next. There's one guy who used to learn in Panovich who's in Smicha Sover. Wow. And he told me a, a story. Uh, he came up to me, he said, listen, he said, I was like, you know, the second or third week of me being married and I come home from shul after davening and my wife mixed coffee with a fleshic spoon. And she's like, you learned in Panovich for five years. Like I came in, like I'm like the God of the door, right yeah. in her eyes. And I walked in she's like, okay, what do I do? What do I do with the spoon? What do I do with the coffee? <laughs> what do I do with the mug? And he's like, and I'm standing there. I was like, I have no idea. He's like, a get is not allowed to be attached to the ground. <laughs> right, so, exactly. know, like, oh. He says, well, you know, the Gemara, I think it's Dav Ksubis and Dav Bez. We only got to Dav Gimel. So, you know, if it was <laughs> after that, you know, I'm not sure. So so here it's it's very, very Lemaisa, right? The goal is that at the end of six months, let's say we're learning, you know, like we said, Hilchus Tefillah or Basa Brachalav. At the end of six months, we want the 99% of Shilas that arise in your house, you'll know the answer to. So something like that, or something in Tefillah, or in Hilcho Shabbos that we spent two and a half years, in six month segments of two and a half years doing. So you should know the basics of of those halachos and really know it well and remember it. That's really cool. And and what's what's like the feedback, I guess? Okay, I, I'm assuming that anyone who joins it loves it, but what's the feedback of like the family, like the kids, the the wives, the parents, the mothers, I don't know. Fathers. Okay, so so incredible, okay? And so incredible that, Last year, we did like a big event for Smicha Schaver at the end of the Zman, and we interviewed participants, right? Like any classical, you know, learning program that you'll have, and they'll interview how it had an impact on them. This year, uh, what we did was 
because we wanted like you know you can't do the same thing twice. Right, I was gotta like, right. change it off. Exactly. So, so, so I said, what could we do that could be a little bit different? So we interviewed the kids of Smichas Chaver participants. That's right. Yeah. Okay, and we basically we asked them. We said, you know, what's Smichas Chaver? Who knows more halacha, your father, or your mother, or like describe it and what it does to your family? And they just basically say how it changes their you know their whole outlook on on halacha and they see their father excited and Torah learning i always say when i pitch it to like rabbeim to do it so i grew up in washington heights a uh, lot of yankee fans in that area sure. and there's you know big rivalry with with the red sox at least back in my day it's yeah, still, yeah. i think I still think, ongoing think it's yeah exactly i don't think that will ever die down that, yeah, that rivalry yeah. Tull, tull, uh, <laughs> yeah exactly Ad bechlal also, you know? <laughs> so um so, you know, in New York, they say you're not going to find a dad who's a diehard Yankee fan whose son's a Red Sox fan. Never happened. Hmm. Why not? Because when you're living something and you love it and you buy the jerseys and, the, you know, and you're jumping, oh, this is amazing. So that seeps into your kids, you know, by DNA. So here the goal of Smichas Chavar is really that. We want people to be excited and passionate about their Torah learning and that their kids should see that. I'm sure... People who learn, you know, the whole day, or people who learn, uh, you know, whatever it is, a balabas learning whatever lima that he has, he's probably very passionate, very excited about it. It's very hard to pour over that passion to the home. So we try to facilitate that by, at the end of every shear, giving the participants question and answers and the comics, and then we have a big CM at the end of every zman, and we invite the wives and the kids, and they're singing and dancing. So it's really. Uh, it's interesting you say that because, like, it's with the Torah, it's like if you let's say like leave yeshiva and like, and or, or don't have much to do with Torah, there's a certain like shame that comes of like, I really should be learning, but I'm not. And like all of a sudden, like they, like people develop this like weird relationship with Torah, like kind of like try to avoid it. Cause like I tried it, it wasn't for me. While over here, what you're saying is kind of like the, the like the reverse of it like it could be you or someone that wasn't so involved but like it's a easy entryway and like it just it just brings you in and like your whole life now all of a sudden revolves around that i'm sure like these guys are like you know something happens and like well actually we actually learned something very similar last week about hilchas you know whatever it was need the shabbos or whatever halachas you're learning and like it just ties it together like makes i don't know experience just better. For sure. People tell me all the time, they said they had never had such a geschmack in Torah learning in their entire life. Wow. They said, like, we've been learning in yeshivas and we've been, you know, doing other forms of learning and we just never felt the sweetness of Torah. And I think a big part of that is because to really feel a geschmack in Lima Torah, you really need to remember it, right? Meaning, someone learns Chamesh, he goes to Shir, he goes to Halacha Shir, so it's nice and in the moment it's great. But if you don't make a Kenyan on it, so then you don't really have it. And I'll share a story that I shared at the CM. The Rav, Rav Shimon Shkap, after World War I, had, uh, he opened the yeshiva in the, in the 1920s. And they had a shas, but it was missing six volumes. And there was one rich person in the neighborhood who had a shas. So he went to him and he said, do you mind donating the shas? And what did the guy say? Absolutely not. <laughs> right? It's my shas. And there's only one. I'm not giving it out. So Rav Shimon Shkap said, oh, great, I have an idea. I'll take the six best guys, best memory. They'll basically move into your house. They'll be there in the morning and night, throughout the night, and they'll memorize these six mesechtas. And I heard the story from Rabbi Wine, and he said that his father was known as Velvel Chulin, because huh. he remembered all of Gemara Chulin, Gemara Rashi Tosos. And they were there for like six months, memorizing it day in, day out. And then once they felt like we had a Kenyan, so they, they came back to the yeshiva. And then whenever someone had a question on, you know, on the Gemara, they would go up to, if it was Chulin, so they went to Rabbi Wine's father. So one of the students there asked Rav Shem and Shikab, he said, if they're already spending five and a half months, six months, you know, in the room, I have a much better way. Just give them a pen and a paper and have them yeah. know, write down yeah. the I Gemara, like write down Rashi, write down Tosis and Shalom Yisrael. What do you need to have them memorize it? So Rav Shem and Shikab said, he says, I don't need books in a bookshelf, right? I need living Sifrei Torah. I need a living Gemara Chulin, right? And I feel it's very much like that in our lives. Like you'll go into people's houses and you'll see Sfarim all across the world, wall which is beautiful, that we're machsh of that, and we want that. And and it's almost, it's like the decor of every Jewish home, right? To have sfarim everywhere. But it's not enough to have the sfarim on the bookshelf. We want living Sifri Torah. Right. And people who come to Smichas Chavar, they feel, I made a kinin on the halachos. It's not just the Shulchan Aruch, the Mishabura that's in the bookshelf. I'm living it. I know it. I remember it. And if you have a question, you can ask me and I'll know it. Or if something arises, I know it. It's, it's mine now. Like I made a kinin. It, I have it, which is very, very impactful in the geschmack of learning. Right? Even in yeshiva, you don't really have that. 
Like you'll make a seam and it's nice and it's good, but do you know it? Do you own it? Is right. it yours? Right. So right. here it's yours. That's very really beautiful. We'll be right back to this week's episode, but first I need to tell you about Joma and they have a podcast. They're a resource. They will help you live a healthier, better, more protected life. Now, here are some words that I wrote down about them. Everyone likes a good podcast. They're looking for one common factor. They want to learn something new that will help them live a better life. Sometimes they're looking for something small, like an entertaining, funny show. And sometimes they're looking to drastically improve their life. The Joma Podcast, that's spelled J-O-W-M-A, is a way to learn about the crucial topics and ideas in the world of health to help you navigate a better and healthier way to live. The Jewish Orthodox Women's Medical Association shares preventative health information geared to members of the Orthodox Jewish community. Their wonderful and engaging host, board-certified pediatrician Dr. Lisa Minkin, each episode delves into various topics and challenges that so many people have or could have. And there's more. Listening to listening is one thing. You can also call the Joma hotline. That's 929-4-GUZUNT. I'll spell that out. G-E-Z-U-N-T. If you have a smartphone, which you most probably do, it's it's there on the buttons as well. If you have the regular phone, it's there on the buttons as well. G-E-Z-U-N-T. If you don't have access to the internet, there you go. The phone number's for you. There's no reason that in 2022 that you need to be in the dark. And some of the most talented doctors and healthcare professionals in our community are here to help. Go listen to the Joma podcast wherever you listen to your podcast and call their hotline 24-6 at 929-4-GAZUN. People, there are so many podcasts out there. And if you're listening to this podcast or watching it, that means you're a person who's looking for better for ways to better their life. I am nothing to do with professionalism or to do with the healthcare system, but they are. They are fantastic. They're also a resource for for um, women joining the medical field. I, I have a bunch of friends that their wives are doctors, PAs, or nurses, whatever it is. They are an amazing organization, but there's so much misinformation out there. We're, we're, I'm working on a project soon to help uh, the world, Cholesterol, about it and, and working together with Joma, which you, you'll see about that soon. But for now, go ahead, look at their podcast, call their line, get informed. It's it's just a easy resource to help you navigate a healthier life. And that's why they're there. Link, a link is in the show notes. And now back to my conversation with Rafael Yada. I want to talk about like your your crazy trip that you're currently on. It's like to me like a trip of a lifetime. You have like these gedolim that you're going to like every city in America, not every, but a lot of cities. Uh, what's that experience like? So with Hashem's help, we hope to do it again. Uh, and the trip has been amazing. But let me give just a little background. You know, sure, yes. 30, 30 seconds. Just uh, I think we haven't really fully developed what exactly smicha. So oh, okay. permission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. just, uh, I was gonna come back to it right. for sure. I don't yeah. just. I think people will appreciate the story better, like the trip that we're on. We love stories. After they, you know, after they understand what exactly, like the buildup of Smicha Savar. So on, you know, very concisely, Smicha Savar has three goals. And I think they came out a little bit in our conversation. Sure. Number one is we want people to have a good time learning. It should be fun. It should be geschmack. Like when you go out with friends to, uh, to a restaurant, you have a good time, we want the learning to be 10 times better than that. Number two is we want the learning to be brought home. It shouldn't stay in the basement. A lot of times people, they close the Gemara, learning's over. Right, everything should be brought up. Number three is we want people to remember what they uh, what to learn. So, the structure of Simichas Chaver to share that's once a week. That's all it is. Now, why is it only once a week? Because we want there's there's no excuses, right? Daf Yomi, it's hard. You have a chasana, bar mitzvah, a wedding, right? The people who do it, mamish malacha. I don't know how they do it. Yeah. Right? Every single day, it's like it's wild. It's wild. Yeah, it and even on Tisha B'Av, when you can't even learn, they have to make it up. Right. Right. So, uh, so it's really it's really it's really really incredible. So here, the share is just once a week. So everyone can clear out, you know, one night of their of their schedule, and the structure of the chabura is very, um, I guess, data driven from feedback we've gotten from participants. Uh, and there's three sections to it. We start off with what's called, you know, the hashkafa or the ethical section, philosophical section. Well, we'll discuss the reasons behind the halacha. So if you're learning, yeah, you know, let's let's go through this with a particular halacha, and you like break it down. Okay, based so, let's, on that. so let's say we're learning hilchos shabbos. Okay, okay, for example. Yeah. So every week will be a different reason why Hashem wants us to keep shabbos, and we'll start with, you know, the rishonim, the achronim, the baba sali, rav shimshon rafal hirsch, the nesiva shalom. Like really, every week is something else. Uh, and the goal of this section is to bring a kaddish baruch into the learning. A lot of times people are learning because they feel like they're checking a box 
Right, it's like I put tefillin on today. Check, talis. Check, I learned today. Check. Right. Now I don't feel guilty for the next yeah. twenty-four hours, and then we start again. Right? right. So here it's like, why does Hashem want you to keep Shabbos? Like, what what's the point? Uh, so that's where we start with that, and and also for the kids, right? You know, a kid comes home and says, "Dad, you know, I rest by texting my friends." Doesn't Hashem say to rest on Shabbos? Mm-hmm. So here every week we're arming parents with an arsenal of reasons that shows the beauty of Shabbos. Mm-hmm. Right? That's that's. So that's why we start with this. And it's also something that's light. That, you know, when you come into Shira, it's not like you're jumping into, you know, right. like a cigar. And then the next section is the question section. Okay, now this is like the funnest part. The Rabbeim, we have, you know, seven or eight questions that we'll throw out to the participants. And we'll go one by one. And we'll tell everyone in the room, we'll say, listen, I'm going to ask you a question. And I want to hear an answer from everyone. Just be warned one thing. Whatever you say, I'm going to say the opposite. You say up, I'm going to say down. You say right, I'm going to say left. So for example, yeah, let's do this. You ready? Yeah. Okay. You're, uh, you're Fleshik. And I bring you a milkshake, Yaakov, and I say, here. And you're like, oh, wow, amazing. This is my favorite. And then you're like, shoot, I'm Fleshik. Do you drink or not? So whatever oh. you say, I'm going to say the opposite. That's funny. Right? So what do you say? I mean, we don't have to discuss it. No, I know it's not a luck podcast. Let's do it. Yeah, but, no, but we can... no, let's dig into it. Um, I would say d- you don't. You, you don't make shackle. Yeah. You know, wait, wait, you don't. You don't drink? I, you don't drink. You made, made the shackle. You made the shackle. I would say you don't drink it. It's the brachal vatala. One of the Saras of Dibros. You know? oh, the, but the, but there's, there's, there's a first one that says about milkshakes. It's, yeah, it's right, right, exactly. Um, I hear that. Okay, so let's go the other way. So then, okay. yeah, you got to drink it. You got to drink What about Basta Bechalov? That's also, is there's that a no, Dereisa? It's not Basta Bechalov. Why not? You're Fleshik. But it's, it's not. It's a Dereisa. It's not a Dereisa. It's waiting. It's a Dereisa. It's sure, the It's a Dereisa. I don't know. Let's say it's in the middle of the meal. Let's say you're like totally blacked out. Is during the meal a Dereisa? Are you not sure? I don't think right? so. So what do I just do now? I just confused you. Yes. Right? You're, so you're totally confused, <laughs> You're the right? son in this <laughs> That's the job. <laughs> so I just totally confused. So what? why did I do that? Because what it does is, is that it creates an appetite for the shear. Mm. So now you're going to, now, at, and now go through, we do another six or seven of those. Okay? And the goal is that you are, you know, thoroughly but, confused. But the Rabbeim need to know either side of it well, no? They do. They, they got, do. We, we choose, we handpick the Rabbeim. It's right. not... You know, we don't, we right. get Baruch Hashem a lot of you got, you want requests. People know the sugyas, Correct. Uh, and and the goal really is that, to, like I said, to create an appetite for the shear. And, and you know, when you're confused, now you become a base keeper, right? A lot of times people will come and like, oh, I, I know Basta Bechalam, I know Shabbos, I kind of learned it, right? So my goal is to show that you don't really know it, mm. right? And not that maybe you know some of it or a lot of it, but when I confuse you, so now you're more receptive to the entire shear. And if I do the job well of, you know, asking the questions. At some point, someone in the congregation or whatever in the shir is going to say, "So, what's the answer, Rav?" Right? right, right. So at that point, I say, "Wait, Habibi, we'll get there." <laughs> right, okay. So, uh, so that's really this this section, and it's a lot of fun, right? If in the first section of the Ashkafa, like you know, you give people like a nice idea, they land here. It's like you're getting everyone on their feet. People are arguing with one another. What about this? What about that? Mm-hmm. And and this is what makes it like really engaging and fun. Okay, and then and then we start the Chabura. So in the Chabura, everyone comes with a Shulchan Aruch or a Mishnah Bura for learning Gor Chaim, and we supplement it with Mar Makomos. Okay, and the Mar Makomos are basically the before and after of the Shulchan Aruch. So we'll start with you know Psukim, Mishnah, Gemara, Rishonim. We do that fairly briefly, and then we jump into the Shulchan Aruch, or yeah, and then either Mishnah Bura or Shach Taz if we're learning Yordia, mm-hmm. and then back into the Mar Makomos for the modern day Poskim. So you sitting in the Shir, you'll see the transmission of Misora from Har Sinai all the way to you. Like literally how it got passed down from generation. And Rav Shachter was speaking about this all the way down, literally to you. Uh, and then as we're going, according to the state of the Shulchan Aruch, the questions that we started off the shir with are slowly being answered, right? And, right. Then, you'll, you, and then you yourself, you'll be like, oh, I said like the Taz, I said like the Shach. I, you know, that was, that was my opinion. I said, you shouldn't say a Shachal, right? And that was like this Rav, right? So it, it really shows you like the halachic process and, and how it, uh, it unfolds. And that's, that's the Chabura. From time to time in the Chabura itself, we'll have a video. That makes brings the halacha alive. So, for example, like in Hilchos Shabbos, we'll continue with this example uh, when we're learning like the sugyas of like opening packages, right? So, there's a lot of you know different ways that they're made, which will have ramifications on whether it's mutter or asa. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, this is all very practical. Everything that we do, our job is not our goal. We're not making rabbis. We're not right. The goal is that your average, your regular person should know. Like I said, ninety nine percent of the shahs that arise in the house. Uh, so we'll have a videos like how plastic caps are made, how metal caps are made, how Pringle bottles are made, right? You know, Pringles, they put the bottom in afterwards, right? So they load it up from upside down. And then the last part that goes on is the bottom, 
So does that? So now when you're opening it, it makes it when you're opening the top, terms. maybe right when you're opening it. I just really made it into clear. regardless. Of opinion, you can never fit your hand. Like, right, totally exactly. Like, I could get it all the way down. Burnham, yeah. Reference. <laughs> um, so interesting. So ba- uh, based on how it's made, will so we'll, the, these videos like bring the halacha life. So there's a YouTube channel called like how I how it's made or something like that. Right. So so you guys probably pound that like no, that probably for, in yeah. <laughs> Sorry, uh, helpful. Now one second. We're almost done. Okay, okay thirty yeah. more seconds, and then I know I'm going on. No, go but, for it. But um. At the end of the shear is really where the magic of Smichas Chavar begins. Because what happens is, is that the Rav will email the participants three things. He'll email him a summary of the shear. So let's say I spaced out for five minutes or something was a little complicated and I didn't understand it. I get a summary of the shear in my mailbox. So Summary, a written summary? A videos? written summary, written of, summary. Oh, of the... What you learned. Right, like a few pages. So like that, if I'm, you know, I'm waiting online for something, I can just take out my phone, it's there, and I can read it. Or I can print it out and learn it, you know, over Shabbos. Uh, and... The second thing that we send the participants are the questions that we started the shear off with the answers. And what I tell the guys is as follows. I say, listen, you know, you came to the shear. You saw the reasons why we keep Shabbos and Nashkafa section. Then you saw the transmission in the Masora, like we went through the postgame from Harsinai all the way down to the modern day postgame. What I want you to do is to print these questions with answers and bring it to your Shabbos table. And you be the next link uh, in the Mesorah of Amisra. They're like now the Rebbe of that. Right. Ask your wife. See if she remembers something from seminary. Ask your kids. Ask the guests. That's, like you be the Magad Shir mm. in the family. And the feedback we get specifically from this section mm. is through the roof sensational. People stop me in the street all the time and they say, you have no idea what this did to my family. You have no idea what this did to my Shabbos table. It's like we're not just talking politics and whatever. Like it's right. It, it's a real thing. And then also what's very cool that we do, the third thing that we sent are we'll take one of the questions from the question and answers and we make it into a comic, right? Mm. So if you have younger kids, you'll be able, you'll put them around the table and like around you and you'll say, there, there'll be like three boxes that depict a scenario, a luck scenario, and say, what is the answer to this question? And then the last box is the answer to the question. So it's a way to engage, you know, even younger kids. And this goes back to my, you know, what we started with, that it's, it has the advantages that, don't necessarily come across in Dafyomi is that it's very practical. You bring it home to the shop's table and and then at the end of every Zman, which is six months, so then there's the test. Right? That's a big test, right? So it's a big test. It's a test on everything that we learned. And it's not easy. It's not hard. Um, some people will say it's Who hard. makes the test? I write the test. You write the test. Yeah. And, and, um, and then those who pass the test, they get this certificate. What's a certificate? The certificate is called... Is it embarrassing if they fail the test or... It happens. So it, it happens. People fail. Right. Um, it's usually, yeah, people fail. People right. do fail. Yeah. Not everyone who takes the passes. Right. I guess I guess that's good because if everyone passed it, then it'll be like, best Correct. in that like no one gets killed. Right. right. Exactly. Um, interesting. So, 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 th- so the certificate, I just want to be clear, even though it's called Smichas Chaver, this is not a smicha program. Right. You're not becoming a rabbi. You're not becoming an assistant rabbi. It's 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 it could be a step to you know you, like it's it's you know getting getting it, if it gets you excited in learning and you <laughs> want to do full smicha. Right. Amazing. We love it. Right. But it, there's no I feel rabbinical like you this disclaimer because someone like once told you like, hey, this isn't smicha, and you're like, no, no, it's not real. Well, technically. <laughs> Um, so we make we actually make it. It's like very important to make that like as right. clear as possible. Like no one's becoming what it really is. It's divrei bracha, right? It's we have three gedoli Israel that sign it. Rav Nevensal, the Rav of the Old City, yeah, sure. Rav Shachter, and and the Rishon Lezion, Rav Shlomo Mar, who signed the the certificate. And really, what it is? It's a bracha to the family. And the goal is that you'll take this certificate and you'll hang it in your house, right? So now your kid. What does he see that you're proud of? Right? Right. You go into a doctor's office. What's hanging in his office? Every certificate he ever got in his life. Right? He went on a weekend retreat or whatever it is. He got something. He puts it up. Right. So a kid. Grows- I got a. I got a degree from Excelsior College. I did not put that up. It is so embarrassing for me that <laughs> Excelsior College. Most people are like, what the heck is Excelsior College? What is that? Um, it's a random college. Yeah. Yeah. But is that like but, an online course. It, that type of thing. Yeah, okay. Um, I went a few things and yeah, but I could totally understand why a certificate. Saying that you know someone took a test and like really mastered uh, Basar Chalav well, like that's really cool that in halacha, really cool. yeah, yeah. And and be, and when do we give out the certificate? We make a big CM, which that's the answer to your question. Yeah, which we'll okay. get to. Yeah, yeah, okay, sure. We, we make a big CM and we invite the wives and the kids and we give out the certificate at the CM, so the kids are experiencing the joy of Simchas the Torah. You know mm. that their father's the Kenyan that their father made in Torah learning, and then they come and they hang it at home in their house. So kids grow up and subconsciously, what's what does he see is important? Not you know, not necessarily the Yankees or the Knicks or the whatever it is. 
it's Torah. And this wow. is what my father really cherishes. Wow. And the most influential person. In well, I'm sure life. you're also like, I mean, obviously I, it's so easy to understand why families <laughs> love this, but I'm sure you have like, uh, I'm assuming, I'm sure, uh, let's say Bakr wants to take this or be involved in this. So, we, about, oh, I don't even know. Right, oh, no? so we, we try, meaning there are some who slip in. Got it. But, but it's more but, of a it's really, type of thing. We really are our target market right now. Our families. Our families. Yeah, we could get uh, Bachram. We have like another wing that, that we started like on college campuses called Halacha U. Really? Uh, which is fascinating. And we have to also speak about Chabad. We have a Smichas Chabad, Chabad track, which was helped started by uh, Rabbi Tzal Bassman and uh, Rabbi Avram Jacks and two Chabad. And there's like, 30 plus Chabad locations. Wow. Which is basically, we take all the Smichas Chavar material uh, and then we add the Shulchan Ar Harav no, okay. and, okay, yeah, yeah. and, uh, and like all the Chabad post game. And it's catered specific for Chabad skirts. Right, right, right. Because they, yeah, they have a, you know. And, and it's also, it's catching like wildfire there and they, the Mamish love it. That's so cool. Well, but so, yeah, tell me about this trip. Okay, so this trip, so basically what we try to do at the end of, you know, every Zman or at least once a year is really to have a siyam where we can celebrate our accomplishments in Torah learning because that has an everlasting effect on the entire families and, and on everyone. Uh, and then this past summer, at some point, I popped into my head. I said, we have to do a siyam again. And I said, last year we did one just in New York. And I said, but, you know, thank God. we are Right now we're in over, probably in over 100 and, you know, 70, 80 locations around the world. I don't have the exact number. Uh, uh, while you're saying it, I'm almost like over 170 people. During, I'm like, oh, that's a lot of people. 170 locations. Okay. Right. okay. Yeah, there's there's over 3,500 participants. Wow. And I like to say 3,500 families. Right. Because right? it's, right. wow. it's, it's not just. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's so not just. Yeah. It's not just the father. Correct. So, so I thought, I said, let's try to go to, you know, cities that have a lot of smichas covers. So, and I didn't want to go to the West Coast. Not that we don't like people on the West Coast. We do. It's just the East Coast is easier. Right. So we, in the past week, we were in Florida, Baltimore, and now we're in, uh, currently we're in New York. And I basically went to Rav Amar and Rav Shachter, and I asked them, I said, are you willing to come down, you know, on a road trip, basically? Wow. To, to Florida, Baltimore. <laughs> the guy who goes on a road trip with the G'day love. <laughs> to, to, you know, to New York. And they said, Absolutely. And not because, you know, they're not getting paid. They're not, they're not missing anything, right? Rav Amar is the Rishon Litzion. He's the Rav Yishlan. <laughs> he doesn't need to get on a plane to America and schlep like, you know, have like a teenager, literally right. like on a road trip going up and down the, you know, the East Coast. Like they don't need any of this. But why do they do it? Because they see, I, I think, meaning they see the impact that it's having on people's lives. And they love Am Yisrael and they love Torah. And because that love is first and foremost in their hearts and uh, of the Jewish people and of the Torah. So they said, anything we can do to Lahag del Torah Veladira, we're going to do it. So yeah, if it means schlepping down to Florida and then Baltimore and then New York, we're going to do it. And they did it. And it was insane. It was insane. In, in Florida, we were in Florida, was it Tuesday night? 700 people came. It was wow. like jam-packed. People come and getting, and, and we celebrate, you know, our Torah learning well, from all the different chaburas because wow. you have you, you have the chaburas and their wives and their kids so you know it's like I said it's not 3,500 participants it's 3,500 families and then in Baltimore it was the same numbers the, the, uh, do you have any stories from uh, from I guess the G'daylam from this from them themselves yeah that you saw like over this trip I don't know oh specifically nothing to do with Smichas Chaver yeah yeah, yeah stop stop yeah, tons, I, yeah tons, it's, tons, can you share tons, one or absolutely something? so what resonates with me the most yeah Meaning, I look at them as two walking Sifri Torah. Yes. That's literally, but but not just the regular Sifri Torah, because Sifri Torah is, is Torah Shabbat Saf. Where we have living Torah Shabbat Saf and Torah Shabbat Peh just walking in front of you. So it's 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 like it's like every time they pass by, I feel like, you know, like just giving a kiss. It, it, right. that's, that's really what it is. And what I've seen is that they look at each other as walking Sifri Torah. And like I said, you know, they have a Havas Yisrael like burning in their heart and they have a Havas Torah burning in their heart. So when they're referring and talking to what the covet they give one to another, it's just mind boggling. Like Rav Amar, like when we walked into the, whenever we walk into like the, the room, so there's hundreds of people. So Rav Amar, and naturally everyone comes to, you know, swarm both of them. They don't walk unless the other one is walking. One of them won't sit down unless the other one is, is sitting down, right? Now, when they're, 
when they tell you, like, so at the end of Baltimore, which was after t- we went to Florida first and then to Baltimore, so we ate in uh, Rabbi Silber's house in, in Baltimore, and they were both waiting to for the other one to sit down, and they initially were sitting across from one another. So I was next to Rav Shachter, and he's like, you know, I, I think, you know, Rav Amar, he always waits for me to sit down until he's done. It's probably because I'm, a, you know, like a year or two older than him, a few <laughs> years older than him. And I was like, yes, that's, that's exactly why. <laughs> so that to me was like, you know, it's Doli Torah, respecting the Torah that they have. Wow. And then, but when they look inward, you know, it's not, oh, he's respecting me because what I know, because I'm great. It's because oh, I'm a few years older than him. You know, like nothing that I right. did. So that was, I don't know, that resonated with me a lot. It's so interesting because, and it's probably a good representation of Smich cover that, that like they're so similar in the fact of when it comes to Tyra and loving Hashem and loving Klal Yisrael, but they're from vastly different backgrounds. And, and I'm sure Smich cover I'm sure you could compare like one Chabura with another Chabura and like worlds apart, but they're still doing the same thing. It's really cool. For sure. Meaning the the Rabbeim that we have, it's like one from every genre of Am Yisrael, <laughs> right. right? So initially we had Rav Zalman Echemi Goldberg, Zichar Tzadik Levracha, and Lahav Dumen Chaim Chaim. Now Rav Nevin Tzal is, you know, I won't say instead, but it's right, he, right. He's he's the third one who signed it. So you have one Rav from like the more, I guess, right wing part, and then you right. have a Sfardi Rav, and then you have you know Rav Shechter from the the YU, YU world, the right. YU world right, more. Right. So it's really, and, and in the Chaburas themselves, we find that as well. Like we have Chaburas in, in Yerushalayim, like like I said, Panovich and Hevron, you know, alumni. Uh, and then we have Svarty Chaburas and Rehovot, and we have, you know, super modern Orthodox ones, or, you know, like all that we have in Lakewood. It's like, it's really the spectrum of, of Am Yisrael, and it's beautiful, because we all have the same Torah. You know, it's like, and in the notes themselves, in the, the curriculum, we try to bring down both Ashkenazi and, and Sephardi post as well. So I know I'm going backwards a little, but like, I'm curious, like how, like what happened that you like said, like, okay, we need to create something like this. Like, did you see another maybe non-Jewish program or way things are working? You're like, oh, that's a very smart way to retain something. Or like, I'm, cu- I don't know. I, so, it could be so, like it happened over a course of time. So it's hard to like remember that. So it really, um, I guess I can get a little bit into you know into the details. Yeah, sure. It's an interesting story. Basically, I was in, I got married to my amazing wife, and we were living in Artisrael, and I did smich in Artisrael, and then you know you're done smich, so now what? So I started interviewing for like different you know locations, and mainly in America, also in Israel. Just funny stories. I interviewed for a Sephardi moshav. That was wild. I was like, interesting. Sephardi, yeah, we'll save that for a different time. Okay. Uh, but uh, kind of wanted to. Know, but okay. <laughs> but uh, but I was just. Amish they're they're great. Right. They're okay. great. They're always great. Uh, should I say the story? Yeah. It was just for fun. Sure. Okay, so, People like good stories. So, so basically, basically I, I was like, you know, let me just shoot, you know, in every direction. So I, there was like an ad in the newspaper because in Israel everything is done through the municipality, through the government. So right. there was like this Sfardi Moshav that was opening. So I said, you know, let me throw in my resume. So I throw in a resume. I'm like, I don't know, twenty eight, double whatever. Yeah, I don't know, whatever young. And um and I and I get there. And it's like Sfardi Rabbanim and, and like, it was like farmers. Like, that's what it was. And I come and they start interviewing me and, you know, asking me like all these different questions and I'm answering them. And then this like one farmer, like, just like interrupts me and he says, Bimchila, Kvodarav, Bimchila. Like, you know, with all due respect. You know, when someone starts a question, yeah, with yeah, all oh due gosh, respect, yeah, you're, you're you trouble. are finished. <laughs> you're, and he just laid it on me. He's like, what are you interviewing for? It's Fardi Moshav. Like, do you know our Piz Morim? Do you know our Miz Morim? Do you know anything? Uh, whatever. So I told him, I said, the truth is I don't. I said, but my goal is really, you know, if you want, you know, I, I can't sing the songs to you. Not yet, at least. I would love to, eventually. I said, but my goal is to make Torah relevant and learning and fun and exciting. So if you have kids... Hopefully they'll, you know, they'll, and the other farmer gets up, he starts clapping. He's like, yeah, this is what we need. I didn't get the job. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so, um, so Lemaisa, so I got a few, you know, different job offers in, in different locations in America. Uh, and I told my wife, one of them was like very, very serious. I said, listen, I got this idea. I want to go for a year or two. And she basically said, listen, you know, I made Aliyah once in my life. There's no way I'm doing it again. So yeah. if you think I'm going, you know, we're going for one year or two, like maybe when we're 80, we'll come back. So she says, if you want to make something happen, you know, try to make it happen here in Eretz Yisrael. 
So that's when I started thinking, like, what could I do? Where is there a need? And then I saw that there really is this need of people don't have a sipuk. They don't have a feeling of like, wow, I accomplished something in Limanat Torah. And two is that your average Balabas doesn't really know halacha. He doesn't. When that's his so wife true. comes yeah. in with any question in Hilchul Shabbos, any question in Basar Bechalav, any question, we, you just don't know. Well, it's not taught in yeshiva. I don't mean to like shake up the whole yeshiva system, but like, why isn't this in like a modified form? In a, I would would have loved to have this when I was in elementary and high school. Yeah, I would love to have had it also. Um, but but I, I don't know why it's not there. But meaning, like you said, what a, the typical balabas is because you're 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 literally not given the tools to learn to have this amount of knowledge in this type of way. We, we're never given that. Like never. Maybe a, a guy who learns in Kylo, like maybe because now they're like studying a sugya in a certain way. But like even that. Even the mechila, right? I, yeah. What I've seen, like we have guys in smicha schaver who have smicha, like real smicha, and they still come to the shir every day. Right, right. Now, why do they come? They have smicha. So, two reasons. Number one, it's a good chazar for klalim. But number two, and the more I think real reason is because smicha schaver. Our goal is to be very, very practical. So, you know, any question that arises in your house, we want you to know the answer. Things that aren't necessarily covered in smicha, because a lot of times they end with the mishabura. Like, for example, your iPhone rings on Shabbos. You forgot to turn the alarm off, right? So you want to move it. So let's assume, right, there's different types of muktzah. Let's assume it's a muktzah that you're allowed to move and you're moving it with a shinoi. So it's ringing. It's a muktzah machmas, hold on, wait, like a mias, actually. Mias? According to a lot of people. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so let's assume you're allowed to move it. Right, okay. So with a shinoi or whatever it is. So where are you going to put it? You want to? You don't want to hear it. So you say you go down to the basement. I'll drop it in the basement or whatever it is, and then I'll go back upstairs. So in the basement, there's no reception. So as you're going down the steps, what's uh, happening to those bars? Uh, right, they just go down to. Is that allowed or not? I so would. That, I mean, whatever yeah. I'm gonna say, you're gonna fight with it. But I'm I gonna fight to, with you exactly. I would totally think that is not allowed. <laughs> right, exactly. So you have to come to Smichal Savar to see why some posts oh, say that might shit. be allowed. Can you give it a little um, like? I want to know. People are listening. Like, wait a second. You have to. You have to. You have right. to. Really, it's, it's not like a question. It's answer. not a like, regular. You have to like yeah. know like the subject. So Meaning, right. and and when you see the transmission of the misora, you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, so so it's a lot more practical than a lot of why don't they do it in yeshivas you have to interview the rosh yeshivas um, and they all have there there is a mahalach to the way that they do it and when you no, I'm not, you're right. Well, well, just so I don't get canceled, I'm not suggesting you switch up everything in yeshivas right. but like this would be a be, nice bonus correct. you know like 30, 45 minutes a day to incorporate this idea of like really owning a halacha sugya and right. like knowing it and getting a good test on it Wow. Okay. I, I'm sure we could cover a million other things, um, but maybe just before we finish off, um, I guess just I guess just let's plug it. Like, we, we, if someone wants to learn more about it, like where where could they? What could they do? Okay. So that's a good question. Uh, the best thing to do is visit. You know, ask their local rav if he has one. Uh, that's really how it's spread. Right, it's really, it's been grassroots. What if a rub is listening to this? He's like, I would love to do this for my Right, so what does he do? Uh, so we have a website, smichaschaver.com okay. or info at smichaschaver.com, S-E-M-I-C-H-A-S-C-H-A-V-E-R. You'll, you'll send it to me, I'll try to com. put it in the show notes. Okay. So, so, um, it's not gonna so yeah, us, info at smichaschaver, and then we'll we'll get in touch and we'll, you know, we can make it happen, Bizat That's really But cool. we only open twice a year, like so after Sukkot and after Pesach. Right, I guess because like you're, what you're, you're, Similarly, I guess to Daf, like you're all on the same Correct. track, so you're not having like a million chaburas doing their own thing, right? And the re- part of the reason we do that is to give the sense of unity, like right. in Daf, because again, this whole thing inspired by the Daf, right? Right. Okay. Um, and so, so that's meaning that's one reason. Uh, and number two, it's also it so it gives like a sense of, of friendship and and camaraderie. And uh, and also you can do siyumim at the end together, right? If everyone's on their own pace. So now, you know, if everyone was finishing at a different time, what am I going to bring Rav Shacht and Rav Amar to Florida, Baltimore, and New York? Right. right. So now we finished. So now we're all celebrating together. Is there, I'll, I'll end off with this. Is there like a dream, like where you see this in 10 years or 30 years, 100 years from now? So I have a lot of dreams and aspirations and Bezat Hashem, Hashem will be mezak me to, to do all of them. Like we started now on college campuses and it's been fire. Basically, we usually Smichas is a six-month curriculum, so we minimize, we didn't dumb down anything because 
people on college campus are just as smart as anyone else. Uh, and what we did was we took out like things that aren't as relevant, and you know we we made it based on semester, so it's like eleven weeks instead of you know nineteen or twenty weeks. Mm -hmm. And the, and the feedback we're getting is insane from like college kids. They're like, this is amazing. And it's like hooking them in. Um, we hope to have a women's program, meaning uh, not with a smicha, but with um, something else exactly. I don't know That's yet. So cool. um, I would love to do a bar mitzvah program for mm. like fathers and, and their kids. Wow. Um, to learn together like halachos and get tested on it, and then maybe come to Israel and visit Rav Amar and, you know, right. or whatever it is, you know, different uh, Gdolim in Eretz Yisrael. Uh, there's a lot of things, you know. There, I love Am Yisrael it. has a lot of, it's, you know. It's the, I, and I can imagine that's just like a taste of your ideas, and like it will evolve even more ever since. Okay, but really awesome. And, and thanks again for, for doing this. And um, I know you're like running on like very few hours of sleep, and you've been literally running and driving to a lot. So, uh, Thank you for, for coming on. Thank you, Ashrach, and thank you for being Mizak Amisrael. It's an amazing sure. way you do. I was telling you this before. It's my you're, pleasure. You're a real voice and inspiring people, and keep it up. Ashrach, should bless that. you. Thank you. And you should have a lot of sad Tishmaya and keep uh, inspiring thousands. Amen. Hundreds of thousands. Amen. Millions. Amen. amen. Right? I'll take Tens it. of millions. Billions? Yeah, why not? You can do billions. <laughs> amen. Thank you, you right? very much. <laughs> okay. Sad Tishmaya. Thank you so much for watching or listening to this episode. If you enjoyed it, if this is your first time watching, please go ahead and share this with someone that would appreciate it. There's so many people out there and every day I meet new people that first heard about this podcast where we're going for a while now or any of the Living the Chaim shows. We're, we've been building steam for a while, but still there's so many people don't know about us. So as a favor for me personally, for Yaakov Linger, please go ahead and share this podcast episode with someone who would love the conversation, someone who will grow in their Yiddishkeit, grow in their learning and uh, feel a little more insightful after listening to this wonderful conversation with these wonderful G'daylam, these wonderful people. And until next time, you can be an inspiration for the nation. L'chaim. Living L'chaim.